What is up guys, it is Enderex here. I am back with another video. Today is a video on World of Tanks Blitz, and I just wanted to show off um, a 4K damage game that I had um, with the uh, Bachillion Barask. Now this tank is a tank that I have been wanting for a while. I don't remember when I first saw it, but I think I saw it like two or three years ago. And uh, it looks like a really fun tank. This tank is a French tank, uh, medium with two shells. I don't know what they're called. I think it's called an auto loader or something like that. Basically, it fires two shells, dealing probably close to 500, 600 damage alpha. I mean, this tank on average will do at least 280 damage to a high of like 300, 310 um, on a gold, good rolls. Now, I'm currently scouting. This game is a pretty slow burn. Um, most of the damage does come at the end. I'm just currently trying to push up because I think that the left side is clear. It is not. Um, there is a silencer and a T28 prototype. Now, the only tank that I recognize here is the T28 prototype. So I peek the silencer, assuming he's not an auto loader, but he is an auto loader. He also hits me for 600 damage, which I think I hit him for a little bit less than that. I still hit him for over half his health because he is a tier 7. Now, there is a Leo and a T28 prototype. In this push, Tiger 1's way back there, and the Wi Fi, uh, Wi Fi is just kind of shooting around. I'm not exactly sure where I want to take this battle. I've already done 600 damage. The Leo does disappear off scouting, but we'll, we'll see him in a moment again. I'm just not really sure where I want to go at the moment. I don't want to peek them because I don't want to trade damage. That's a dumb way to lose a battle. The Leo comes behind us to peek us and uh, shoot at me. And uh, he does connect a good 300 damage shell into me. However, the Y5 has a much faster reload speed than the Leo. The Leo just kind of sits there, just staring at me, and um, he only gets one shell into the Y5 before he is finished off by the Y5. Just want to watch his death because he's a dumbass. Anyway, turning my attention back to the battlefield, I do not want to push on this uh, front. I want to move over to. I want to move over to mid. You know, um, I want to move over to mid if I had the choice. Uh, I wish I could get rid of the 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 freaking play bar at the bottom, but no matter what I did in the game, it would not get rid of it, so... I, I, you're just gonna have to deal with it in the replay. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why it does that. I don't know why there's not a button to just push that away, but whatever. We're gonna deal with it. So I push to mid. I see the SMV, but I also see an E10 very low, 450 damage. I'm not sure if I'm gonna pet it. I'm gonna get one shell into him, and I'm gonna try and get another shell, but I do not get the opportunity to. So he jumps down and joins his chums. There is a Carnivorin down here along with an SMV and the E10 collectively. Now, luckily for me, the Conqueror, Conqueror, uh, or Carnivorin, is uh, actually sped, or doesn't know what planet he's on at the moment. So I take a chance. I'm going to peek this K2. I want to help my teammate out over here since I don't have a good opening on this E10 since the E10 has now turned his attention to me. The SMV is going to flank me from behind. And so I'm going to get I'm getting pushed off of this power position. So it's either I get hit by an e, uh, E10 or I get hit by an SMV. Now particularly in this scenario, I'd rather get hit by an E10 but since my target 2 is there, now freed up of that K2, he's going to push down and clear the E10 for me meaning that I can move out of this position, and that is a great move. Now, the Carnivorin does not know what planet he's on, so he's obviously just going to turn his butt to me and doesn't react to me at all. Now, since I forgot that HE exists in literally, like, 100% of my matches, I forgot to use it, but I did use one shell of HE there to get 700 overall damage into the Carnivorin. Good chunk of health. I decided to push. I wanted to make sure that the SMV wasn't there and wasn't going to be a big problem. I shoot one HE shell. That's 294 delf. And I finish him off. That's over 400 damage in two shells of HE. Now, I'm going to capture base B. Now, as you can see, the enemies have all bases captured. If we do not kill these people, this game is over on base capture points. The Tiger 2 is peeking the SMV, but cannot penetrate him. I know I can't penetrate him either. The SMV has already gone back into cover, meaning that he probably has used up all his shells and is currently reloading. So I relocate and move over to help my Wi-Fi uh, help with these um, T28 prototype. Now I'm not exactly sure how this happens, but I do manage to out. Uh, I do manage to finish it in one whole um, clip. So that's that's the power of the Barask. Uh, 400 damage of his remaining health, and he is gone and dead. Now this next part, I do have to be very self-conscious here. This part is extremely stupid, and uh, the SMV deserved at least one hit on me. Uh, I'm not sure the SMV's uh, reload time between Bruh. shells, but basically, he shoots at me. It probably would have hit me, but it hits the car instead, meaning that it does not hit my tank. If he had hit me, probably would have probably got me down 300 health, but I probably still would have been 
able to finish him because my clip is just faster than his clip. And that is my 4,000 or 4K damage game. Only my second game with the Bat Chilean Barask. And this is an amazing tank and I really do um, recommend it if you want a fast French firing freaking it's a beast, man. It does a whole lot of damage. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it safe. Peace.